Hey, I'm Jimmy from JimmyRose.me, and in this video, you're going to see all my favorite ways to use Text Expander to save a crazy amount of time. Text Expander is in my top two productivity tools, the other one being uh, Zapier, uh, but I use it multiple times per day to save me a ton of time in typing and searching, and you're going to see uh, how to do that for yourself very soon. It's one of these tools where every time I speak about it at like an event or conference, people's minds are blown, so I'm hoping I can do the same thing for your mind uh, today. If you're not familiar with Text Expander already, I will go through a very basic introduction uh, before we kick off into all the examples and ideas. So starting off with a very simple example, I have Text Expander open here on the left and a notepad on the right hand side. This is called Notepad++, it's just one that I like to use. But let's go and open up one of my folders here. So these are different snippets of text uh, that are categorized into folders. So Agency Highways, my podcast. So these are all the snippets that relate to Agency Highways. At the folder level, we define a prefix. And you'll see what this means in a, in a minute. So that mine's period or a full stop, depending on uh, what country you're in, what you call that uh, symbol. But you can see there dot AH is the abbreviation. You can see it down here, AH with the prefix of a dot. This snippet is called Agency Highway and this is the text we're going to expand. So if I go over here, type the prefix and then AH space, it expands into Agency Highway, which has just saved me a bunch of keystrokes typing that in. You know, we've got some other ones there, like uh, AHW is the website for Agency Highway. So if I'm ever trying to share that link with someone to go and get access to my podcast, I can just type in those couple of keystrokes and it extends uh, out into that larger link to save me typing the whole thing. That is essentially what Text Expander does at a really basic level, but you can take it way more advanced than this. So let's dig in to a bunch of my favorite examples. One thing first, uh, you can see there I am using that period or full stop as the uh, prefix to all of these. It's actually probably more common with text expander aficionados to use a semicolon. I just use a period because it's kind of the habit that I fell into a long time ago when I was first introduced to this tool. So first up, some of the things I like using it for are just basic information, whether that's about me or our business. For example, email addresses, right? So I have .e for my own email address. I've got e for our admin email address. And, and if I go uh, .p for personal and then email, that's my personal email address. Uh, so I have all the different email addresses uh, that we use in our business. So support addresses, all that kind of stuff if I need to send them to people. So emails are a great one. And then you've got uh, phone numbers. So uh, our company phone number, I've got .m for my mobile phone number and various contact details. So that's really handy when you're filling out contact forms or anything like that where you need to put your phone number. Just another good thing to have on, I guess, quick reference and, and so that you don't have to keep typing them out. Because I guess if you make a one digit mistake in one of these when you're typing, you might not notice it. And then uh, you might've submitted it to somewhere that you shouldn't, right? So that's why I just, I guess that's another the benefit of text expander is that it reduces that element of human error and typos. And for these things, uh, I've got them set up in different places. So you can categorize uh, however you like. I've generally done mine by business units. We have sort of different products or whatever in our business. Um, I'm thinking of reorganizing these into say websites, having all the websites in one place or having like all the phone number and contact info in one folder. You know, you can you can organize this however you like, but um, you can see here. So I've got uh, .p for phone under there um, and the email, admin email for the company is, is under, under this one. So you can see how they're all set up. Some of the other business info you can see there is our ABN. So that is uh, like a employer identification number, I guess, if you're in the US. So it's just our business number. You know, I don't remember it. So um, I've got it there available if I ever just want to type ABN. I've got our bank details here. So uh, AT being my prefix for Acturatech, which is part of our business, uh, BD for bank details. That expands into the details that we include on our invoices uh, for people to make payments to our bank account. And in a way, if you look at the reports that Text Expander gives you about how much time you're saving each month, 
it's only really taking into account the time uh, spent typing, right? So having to type out BSB and account and name there. Uh, what it's not taking into account is the amount of time that I just saved going and having to search or log into my internet banking to get my bank details because I'm going to forget them every single time. I see it as an even better productivity tool than uh, the reports and the statistics here that Text Expander give you. Okay, so moving on, some more basic info. So websites are another one that I use this for. So all our different websites, I've got AT is my prefix. It's quite important to have a naming convention so you remember all of the different things. So all your different websites are, you know, I have ATW, so that's Acura Tech website. I have .content snare is our software product website, uh, .jr for my productivity blog, .w for website, um, and our podcast is Agency Highway, a H website, right? So all the different websites I use are social links, for example, so dot, uh, .social. If I'm including those in video descriptions or podcasts or whatever, I can link to all my socials uh, just with that one little expansion and you'll find those uh, under general, I believe. Yeah, so I've got socials or just my Twitter. If I don't want to link them all in one go, I can just go .tw for Twitter or .li for LinkedIn. Also, obviously, my YouTube channel, so JR for Jimmy Rose, YT, uh, that's in there as well if I ever need to link to the channel that you're watching this video on. Moving on, I have some of our design info in here. So our uh, hex codes and that kind of thing for all the different colors. I am always having to look up <laughs> the hex codes every time if I'm using a, a tool where I'm setting up a company profile or something, I'm always looking for the colors. Um, so I use like um, hex uh, and then maybe aqua, you can see on the left hand side there, hex A, that's, that's our hex code. Um, and I've got all of them together if I just go hex. Um, then I can actually just copy out the one I need. If you are using booking links or Calendly, you probably have a lot of different meeting types that people can use to book you. And they may not all be public, right? So you might have a general Calendly page like this where there's only a few things that people can book publicly, but there might be some other links that you want to send to clients directly. Um, and I've got lots and lots of different ones of those, right? So um, I have .b for book prefix. Uh, and you'll find all of these under general over here, but you can see how many different ones there are. So there's like, um, you know, book an onboarding call for content snare, or, or there's some other ones there with video testimonials and a VIP link where it's got some more times available than my normal chat. So all the different booking links that I use are throughout here and uh, just to save me looking them up and manually typing them in every time. Following on from links, we can also look at using Text Expander for resources or blog posts on your website that you are commonly linking to. So whether this is in communities and Facebook groups, you know, for example, if someone asks me in a web design group about how to get more clients, I have a, uh, a post, Get Web Design Clients, JWDC, that expands into the link for that. And Taking that a step further, I even have uh, full responses to go with these. So you can see this one here, I'm using uh, the pound symbol because that is how Intercom uses uh, canned responses. So again, GWDC space, um, and there you can see this, com this question comes up so much, I put it into a blog post and here's a summary of it and to the link. Now there are so many different handy links you could create in Text Expander. So some of the ones I like are Google Documents or Sheets that I use regularly. Um, again, yeah, links to resources on my website and blog posts that I use all the time. Now if you have a lot of these, it's really easy to forget the acronyms, right? So with uh, Text Expander, if you hold Control or Command on a Mac and forward slash, you see you get this little window here. So if I was like, what's the abbreviation for the web clients thing again? I, I could search clients and it's got a list of all the different ones there. So there's the post link and there is the uh, canned response. You can see it's even got our uh, keyboard shortcuts there too. So uh, I didn't have to use the mouse at all there. I could have just gone control slash, typed in clients and then control two, and then you've got that uh, canned response. How good is that? And finally, before we move on to some of the bigger expansions beyond uh, links, if you're in marketing, you probably know about UTM parameters. So if we had our website there and we wanted to put some UTM parameters on it, um, I can use uh, .utm to build a UTM link, right? So 
This is going to append, I'm just gonna type in SRC and MED. We've got an optional section here where if I wanted to put the UTM campaign term and content links, I could tick that on and type in uh, the information there, but I'm gonna leave that blank and just hit okay. Um, and then it's going to append uh, the UTM parameters on the end of the link. Really important if you are trying to track where your traffic comes from. And another little bonus one there, if you are a Facebook marketer, uh, FBUTM creates the tracking parameter block for uh, Facebook ads. So, you know, before I'd have to copy and paste this into every new ad uh, from somewhere, but now it's just right there on uh, .fbutm. Okay, let's get into some of the bigger stuff now, like using this for emails. So you can use this for parts of emails all the way through to entire emails, right? Like at the basic level, I use it for uh, signing off my emails, .c. So it just says, cheers, James. There might be little segments or sayings that I say all the time, like LMK, like let me know if you need help with anything else, or uh, cancel, like I've just canceled that subscription. So anything you find yourself uh, typing lots and lots, I even got what's up <laughs> in there. So little parts of emails or chats that you uh, find yourself using a lot, you can put in there, or you can actually have entire emails, including the subject. So I've just got a new email here in Gmail, Email, you can see if I highlight the subject line there and uh, type in GL1, for me that stands for good lead. So it's, it's a potential good lead for our software. So I can type in their name and a use case for our, our software. And what it's done there, because I had highlighted the subject, it's tabbed down into that and then pasted in the email. So just so you can see what that looks like, I store these in my Gmail folder here. So what that looks like, you put in you put in the text here and then you can put a keystroke in and, and that's uh, hidden up here. So you just click that and go tab and it puts in that tab. And then we've got placeholders here. So um, you can just say a single line um, type in name. And then when you do that expansion, it will actually ask for their name and fill out this entire email. I have some set up for my podcast. So when I want to tell a guest that a podcast is live, uh, it's agency highway email live. So I can put in their name uh, and, and paste in a link to the episode. I'm just gonna put in a random link there and it'll actually go and generate these uh, shareable links on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So if I open that one up, uh, you'll see what this looks like there. So it's just got some links um, with the same URL of the episode uh, being dumped into certain parts of those links. So what you've seen so far are the things that save me the most time. I'll just go through a few extra things that you might want to think about. So I know that a lot of people use text expander for autocorrect, like if you type receipts the wrong way. So uh, down here, I've got an example there. So you could actually just create one with no prefix that if you type receipt the wrong way, I E P T, it will replace it with E I P T. I tend to shy away from any autocorrects because I think that kind of promotes me having a bad uh, keyboard usage and I'm trying to get better at typing and keyboard usage. So um, I've avoided any autocorrects, but if you find there are words you mistype all the time, it could be worth uh, setting up just for productivity reasons. You can use it for things like emojis and symbols. So for example, uh, the great British pound symbol, I don't have that on my keyboard because I'm in Australia. So if I ever need that, it's up on GBP. Uh, you can actually add cloud libraries to Text Expander. So you can see here, uh, down in the very bottom left, if you click that plus button, you can add a, what's called a public group. And I've got one there, uh, which is the emoji cheat sheet. So it's pulled in all these different emojis. Uh, and the way I use that is generally through search. So if I go control slash uh, and I want to put in a clock, there's all the different clocks. So I can go, oh, there's the one I want, the alarm clock, I just hit enter and I get that emoji. Um, and you know, of course, what uh, emoji collection is complete without the little shrug ASCII dude. 
So there you go, that's a roundup of a lot of different ways that you can use Text Expander to save time in your business. Like I was saying before, it, it Text Expander gives you reports about like how much time you've saved typing, but in reality, it's so much more than that because you haven't had to go searching for those links or bank details or you know phone numbers. If you don't know them off by heart, you've got to go and try and find them to put them into places. But if you've just got a keyboard shortcut for that, it's saving you a lot of time. We've gone into some fairly basic use cases here. You can get really crazy with Text Expander. You can actually start putting code snippets in there like bits of HTML and CSS if you're a developer um, where you might fill out a class name and it'll do everything else around that. Um, if you want to learn more about like all the more complicated ways you can use Text Expander, check out my Text Expander mini course, uh, jimmyrose.me slash text expander dash course uh, linked up below. Otherwise, just grab Text Expander and start playing around. I'm going to drop a link below this. Uh, it'll just be jimmyrose.me slash text expander. If you use that, you will save 20% off your uh, yearly text expander price. It's already bloody cheap. So just go and check it out, start playing around and get ready to have your mind blown of how much time you can save with this. That's it, thanks for watching. If you have any questions on text expander, make sure you drop in a comment below. Hit subscribe if you wanna learn more about getting more productive and automating your business. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and I'll see you in the next video.